At the weekends here, it all comes down to this. Wear my fancy threads today. I like that. Do you, well, you have one too. Yeah, I'll have mine on on Sunday. All right, I'm going to wear mine today and talk a little bit about Andrew Harris and the Grey Cup parades, parties, media requests, and social media. There are more distractions than ever for the two teams taking part in Grey Cup 99. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers have the option of putting their phones away. The Lions, the hosts, don't exactly have that luxury. So if you're hoping to see running back Andrew Harris out and about in the next 48 hours, you're going to be disappointed. Harris is going underground to focus solely on the game. It's totally overwhelming for me, you know, I, my, my phone's constantly, there's something coming into it, so, uh, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow and the day after, I'll have my phone off and, uh, you know, I'm just going to start focusing on the game. You know, I'm, I got some good rest yesterday and finally starting to calm down, so uh, I'm excited, you know, uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's all about the game now, I'm not going to worry about any of the, any other stuff going on and uh, just try to get my, uh, the right frame of mind uh, for the game on Sunday. And then, uh, of course, this side is arguably the better side because, of course, it has my last name, right? Of course. Number. <laughs> name and number. Yeah. Well, diamonds and gold, that's and what it's all about the right there. Lions alumnus Dennis Javen won the Grey Cup in 1985 when the Leos beat the Hamilton Ticats 37-24. 26 years later, the memories of the win are still fresh in his mind, and it's hard to find the words to describe reaching the pinnacle of Canadian football. It's really kind of hard to put that into words, right? So it's a very emotional moment, uh, you know, holding the cup, drinking out of the cup, taking the cup as your friend on the plane, you know, that kind of thing, and, and getting the ring on. I think, uh, you know, this ring probably means more to me today than it did then, just because, you know, the legacy of that 1985 team and in the BC Sports Hall of Fame, the, the BC Lions Wall of Fame, you know, all those kind of things. You know, it seems like we get better each year. <laughs> well, Javen's 85 Grey Cup victory was at Montreal's Olympic Stadium. That was two years after heartbreak when he and the Leos lost in the Grey Cup final in front of their home fans in 83 at BC Place. Javen recognizes that the 2011 Lions have an opportunity to do something really special on Sunday. In fact, he's guaranteeing it. Oh, BC Lions are going to win. <laughs> well, that's, that's my prediction. You heard it here first. <laughs> the team that... Uh, can come out and do it the way it was drawn up in spite of all the pressure, in spite of all the noise, um, and put it together, that's a team that's going to be successful. And so far, when you look at the last four or five games, the BC Lions have been able to do that over and over. Go BC, go. Well, it's difficult enough to win just one championship. Imagine the thrill of doing it three consecutive years. The senior boys soccer team from Glen Lyon, Norfolk, well, they know that feeling. This afternoon, they raise their third consecutive BC banner to the rafters. Last season, we had one or two goal scorers who <laughs> scored dozens of goals. This season, the true success of this team came from the fact that dozens of players stepped up and scored such crucial goals. Well, the Glen Lyon staff should be pros at putting on these pep rallies. Three straight years of BC soccer supremacy. The gym walls are starting to get full. But what makes this championship special is it's the first title for the Griffins in the double A ranks. They moved up a league this season and still managed to dominate the competition. The boys went 29-2-1 this season and beat Burnaby from Caribou Hill, uh, Burnaby Caribou Hill Chargers 2-0 in the finals. They've won the last two BC championships. They've been to two Colonist Cup finals. Uh, they've been the island champions. They've, in other words, they're the defending champions uh, of every event that uh, has preceded these, uh, this season. And yet, despite that pressure, they managed to win their first AA Provincials on the first try, which makes them a remarkable group of boys. Well, they already have the AA League Championship, but the Griffins still can't put the cleats away for the season. They have one more game left to play. The Colonist Cup final is scheduled for Wednesday of next week at Centennial Stadium to determine the city champions. Now, the game was postponed a couple of times due to poor weather and field conditions. The Griffins will face Lambrick Park in the city final. The provincial title that we've just won will be a major, major confidence builder for the boys and give them a lot of momentum, but we respect Lambert, our opponents. They are the only team to have beaten us this year, uh, and so the, that uh, makes it uh, for a special competition, and I think it will be a, a close game uh, and a great evening of soccer. The, the last thing uh, for me as a grade 12 um, I'll be doing with uh, GNS soccer, so I mean, we're looking forward to that. Um, 
the provincials was huge, uh, so it's really nice to have one more game uh, as a grade 12. And I know there's a lot of a lot of grade 12s in their final year on the team, so I mean that that'll be great to have that on Wednesday night. Well, it's one of the oldest and most prestigious trophies in Canadian rugby. Since 1911, Vancouver Island's top two teams battle for the Barnard Cup. And tomorrow it will be the UVic Vikes hosting the two-time defending champion James Bay Athletic Association. Now the Bays have hoisted the Barnard more team times than any other team. But they'll be in unfamiliar territory for this game, playing in the league final outside of the cozy confines of McDonald Park. And that means being prepared. Rain and wind wasn't enough to cancel the final practice before the game. Now, both teams will be missing some key players on Saturday as some of the league's leading scorers are away at the HSBC Sevens Tournament. But expect an all-out war at Centennial Stadium Saturday. The base have designs on a 3 P performance. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've, we've been in this uh, contest uh, many times before and uh, we know what it's all about. And we know uh, with you, Vic, we always have such great games with them and uh, wouldn't expect anything different than this one. Yeah, we're definitely ready. Well, the season series between the two clubs sits at a game apiece with both games decided by two points or less. As far as UVic having an advantage as the top seed heading in, Captain Hugo Belanger says, well, there isn't one. Yeah, I expect the same. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to be nice to win by a big margin, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, realistically, you have to plan to, to be in a close game with these guys. Like, they always seem to be. But, you know, the game's so unpredictable at times. Uh, you know, you just you kind of go with the flow in some ways. It's In some ways, it's organized chaos. So uh, you just play with what you see in front of you, and you just you go for it. Jeff Williams is in, in some kind of Movember stash competition. You. So follow him on Twitter if you want him to win the stash off. Um, I told him December 1st he needs to take it off. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> his mustache. Yeah, there you go. All right, Mike, thank you. You're we'll welcome. check back at uh, about 6.45. Great. See you then. All right, time for Sports Myers here with that, Mike. Well, Hudson could be being store for an all-island final on the high school gridiron if both the John Barsby Bulldogs and the Bolinas Whalers win their semifinal games tomorrow on the mainland. And the two mid-island rivals will clash at BC Place for a BC banner. Yeah, here you go, here you go. Well, for Bolinas, that means beating the Mission Roadrunners. The Whalers found themselves practicing on pavement last night due to a lack of gym space. But what doesn't kill you is only going to make you stronger. Mission is undefeated and have yet to be seriously tested during the playoffs. The Whalers, well, they're well aware of their opponent's weapons. Outmatched at almost every position, they are hoping for a lot of turnovers. They're big. They, you know, got to have a Division One kid that uh, I believe he signed a letter of intent to uh, UNLV. Um, they're talented, athletic, big, strong. Um, they're a good football team. Well, it will take some disciplined football in the game of their young lives, but the Bolinas boys aren't going down without a fight. It's been three years since the school made the playoffs, and a lot longer if you're looking for a semifinal appearance. The Roadrunners like to run the ball and putting extra pressure on the Whalers' defensive core. Our linebackers are going to have to have a big game. Our D tackles are going to have to have a big game. It's basically just uh, all the guys in the box stepping up. It's definitely going to be the biggest game I've ever played in my life. Uh, I don't know. They're a very good team, and we're going to have to play our best game to win. Good luck to Coach Hines, and uh, good congratulations to Barsby for the JVs winning yesterday, and uh, good luck to... Uh Varsity. Yeah, Varsity Rams playing tomorrow, and of course there's that Lions game on Sunday. That one too, that yeah. little game on Have Sunday. Have fun, man. Thanks.